Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to be working on our moon mission and in fact we're going to probably launch it in this episode but first we're going to launch a test of the Kelly spacecraft aboard the Nico 944 and we're not going to have Kerbals in that one which means it can't actually get to the moon anyway because we won't have control over it if we lose certain stages but it might function as a rescue vehicle of some kind uh, should the need arise so so yeah that's the plan for that uh, it will just remain in low earth orbit as a rescue vehicle and then we will build the S4 stage which will be the transfer stage and then we'll build the the actual crewed mission that will go to the moon and of course we will launch the S4 stage shortly before we launch so both of these will have to be complete before we start the mission and then we will launch the S4 stage shortly before we launch the the um, actual crew and yeah we will see how that works out for us it might be a bit dodgy who knows but anyway let's get this done and we'll see what happens we have a year and year and a half let's call it and at least our build speed is fairly quick unfortunately other technology we could make use of is gonna take a while short-term habitation would be nice landing would be especially nice but again th that only includes a tiny landing struts but you know maybe tiny landing struts are better than nothing right now we're just gonna be landing on the engine bells the asterisk engines so that's rather dodgy okay so I'll come back to you once we can get this on the pad all right, so here we are, test of the the Kelly spacecraft on the Nico 944. You might have noticed how much quicker it is to build the S4 than the Kelly portion of this mission. And that's of course because the S4 is just a big fuel tank with some engines attached, whereas this is much more complicated. So if we already have this in orbit, it would only take 43 days to build the stage necessary to transfer it to the moon. Unfortunately, uh, 43 days would still be too long to rescue any Kerbals around the moon because we're not sending over 43 days worth of uh, food, water, and oxygen. So, but it's a thought, it's a thought, if we could get our build times even shorter, we could potentially, uh, as long as we've got this portion launched, we could very quickly build a rescue mission should it be necessary of course or we could just build the entire rescue mission ahead of time that would be another idea okay uh, throttle is up and so uh, we should actually have the rendezvous window up and see how our timing is working out we'll have to get into the same inclination as the moon uh, because if uh, something goes wrong with the main mission it'll be going into that inclination too and we don't want it to be wildly off when we try and rescue it. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. All right, up we go. Not too sure about the paint job on this. Maybe, maybe there are better paint schemes than what I've got here. Distinctive, of course, but could come up with something better. Once again, we'll be trying to recover this first stage using stage recovery, though. It does need to splash down, though, because it's got the floats. It doesn't have lander legs. We are past the speed of sound. Oh, we have a bit of a loss of something or another on one of the engines. Performance loss in one engine. Anyway, set. Uh, set. Oh boy. Set. Set. Uh, separation is not working. Um, I will attempt. Oh boy. Uh, it's here. Ah, Jettison. No connection to send command on? What? We have a connection. Oh boy. 
Well, it's uh, looking like we're gonna lose the full value of this one. We've launched the rocket before. So is it because the Gemini crew cabin is interfering? I don't want it to be controlling from here anyway. It should be control. Uh, let me. Maybe it's because. But then, how do we launch? How did I control it the whole way up? Oh, I guess maybe it's that quirk of. I need to control from the um, the Saturn instrumentation unit, wherever the heck that is. There it is. But I can't send that command either. But I guess you can't have an uncrewed... We're just gonna have to control it. We're just gonna have to send a Kerbal up, I guess. Yeah, I don't see what to do about this. Well, that wasn't decoupling. Yeah, I think if I just have an uncrewed Gemini cabin, even if I'm controlling from the Saturn instrumentation unit, it won't work. Oh. Um, note to self. Next time, arm the stupid parachutes ahead of time. We could at least save the capsule. But then again, if I arm the parachutes ahead of time, they'll just deploy. Yeah. Maybe uh, above a certain altitude, auto arm the parachutes. Well, this is sad. Interesting to note that the 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 cabin would survive uh, complete disassembly of the craft, even without the launch escape system. Very sturdy thing, the Gemini cabins. But yeah, not the test I was looking for. On the bright side, uh, if we have Kerbals in, we should have we should have a connection. We should have communication. I think uh, it was just confused because there was nobody in the Gemini cabin, even though we had the Saturn instrumentation unit. Apparently, we can't do uncrewed tests. Uh, you guys can tell me if uh, that's right or not. Okay. Uh, well. What can I do? Back to Space Center. So we were controlling it using MechJet because MechJet doesn't obey remote tech anyway. We were lacking connection to hold... Well, we weren't really lacking connection. You saw remote tech had a connection, but the Gemini cabin lacking crew overrode that, which is some strange bug, all right. But I think that's what was going on. Anyway... I should at least recoup my funds spent, but... Uh, Alright, uh, let's get another set uh, queued up as well. We'll do at least two missions. So, previously we had hired Kazu Kerman, uh, who does have a little star. We have, of course, lost Jebediah. Um, we'll hire Lara Kerman. Uh, it looks like it only costs 10000 is that right? Yeah quite affordable. Well then again, when you look at it, if this was, uh, since every fund is supposed to be a thousand dollars in nineteen sixty dollars or something like that, that means it costs ten million to hire one of these, which pretty much represents their pay for their lifetimes, right? So I guess it's reasonable. Okay. Joan? Sure. I'm I'm more in interested in pilots, obviously. But perhaps we should hire some engineers. Alan? And the rest are all scientists. We'll hold off on scientists. You know what, though? We do have a lot of science to spend, 747. Maybe we should do that and get some upgrade points. We are already unlocking short-term habitation. I want to get uh, early space stations. Seems like a good thing. But it requires mature capsules. So we will unlock mature capsules. Is there anything else we could possibly want? So, uh, mature capsules. Okay, now we're researching that. Which should lead to early space stations. So, we'll be 
Um, well, okay, it's not letting me actually unlock early space stations. How about space exploration? No. Okay, hold on, let me back out and try this again. I know it's a lot of stuff that hasn't actually been fulfilled that we're telling it to unlock. Sure, capsules. Short term habitation. Yeah, it's just. You can't go that many steps ahead, I suppose. We just need three signs and we can unlock space exploration and early space stations, which seems alright. That should be where we're going. As far as engines go, um, it's all pretty advanced stuff after this. We get the J2s there if we want them, and then heavier stuff. But. Yeah. There's not much in advanced stage combustion here, oddly enough. You'd think advanced stage combustion would be... Th these are pretty advanced, but RD-170 kind of stuff, but I guess I don't have it. Alright. Alright, interestingly, the next S-4B is going to take 73 days to finish. That's more than I thought. Uh, well, we've got some upgrade points, but I would actually rather put that into R&D, which is a little bit slow right now. So let's add that. Okay. Uh, anyway, we have an S4, not an S4B, S4, and uh, Kelly spacecraft launch both ready. And we will launch first the S4. But it takes four days to roll out, which means, and this one takes five days to roll out. So the S4 will have to remain in orbit for four days before we can launch the Kelly. Now, in real life, they had two different launch pads for this sort of thing, but we don't. All right, let's hope there are no weird hijinks with this one. Uh, we need to line up the moon, of course. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Well, hardly even noticed it when we had performance loss of one engine last time, because, well, the gimbling on the other engines compensated. Of course, we have, would have had some Delta V loss from that, but... Now, this is, you know, beyond the actual capacity of this launcher, so we have to keep that in mind. We'll probably need the S4 to finish off orbit and all. And we also want to go a little bit steeply compared to what we were doing with the test of the Kelly because on that test uh, the whole thing being brought to low earth orbit is only 36 tons this is more than 50 tons okay looks like uh, this time all nine NK-15 engines performed fine we are going very steeply and we're getting ready for set and ignition Okay, uh, catch it. Alright, there we go. So we'll see if we can recover that bit. Mm, what we got here? Vessel complete stuff. We want to watch for the message from stage recovery. Let's just go at a 45 degree angle. Time to apoapsis is actually going down already. How long is the next stage? Six minutes. Ooh. Uh, we might want to get some more time to apoapsis. Thrust away to the next stage. 0.71 at the start. Not the worst I've ever seen, but. Okay, we have a message, and the stage is recovered. Stage value is 16,000, total refund is 16,000. We lost, uh, call it 300 something. So, wow, good stuff. Terminal velocity, 5.57 though. It's cutting it close. 
a good time. It's only 41.33 kilometers downrange from the KSC. So that's like a third of the cost of this particular launch, by the way. Okay, set. And ignition. So the NK-15Vs operated normally, uh, nominally, normally, either way. Now we're on NK-19s. With the Saturn instrumentation unit there. We do have to be very careful what kind of orbit we leave this in because a rendezvous is involved. Earth orbit rendezvous between this and uh, the actual mission. We've got the Arizona Anto 4 here to help make the rendezvous. It's currently looking like we'll need about 300 to 400 meters per second from the S4 stage. Okay, finally nearing the end of this burn. And we've got some extra time to apoapsis for the S4 stage to finish things off. Now looking more like about 500 meters per second from it. Okay, set. And ignition. RL-10s have ignited. And without any payload, they actually have quite a bit of thrust. So we need to restrain that time to apoapsis a bit. We have been pretty good on our inclination, but then it started to go awry late in the game. Okay, that's good enough. 250 by 218. And we are in orbit, 46 tons. But, uh, well, hopefully that'll be enough. Let's... Let's get that thing off. Okay, good. So our docking port... Well, it says locked. I hope it's all right. Yeah, I hope it's gonna be able to allow us to dock. But anyway, let's oh, let's get our fiddly bits out. Um, so panels, and this should be all set. Let's uh, not watch for the boil off. <laughs> and let's quickly do what else we need to do, which is launch the other part of the mission. What's our actually act? What is our actual inclination? 0.51 with respect to the moon. We were like at 0.25 the whole time and then suddenly near the end it started to go a little bit bad. Okay, okay here we go. We are ready to launch and we are going to have well experienced pilot Kazu Kerman and novice pilot Lara Kerman. Yes, uh, as far as engineer is concerned, let's let's focus on the piloting this time. Okay, launch. We will have to have them wait on the launch pad for a little while to time for the rendezvous with the S4 stage. We really need to get that tight. Uh, a bit bouncy, and there's a third launch, so there's more possibility for mathematical glitching. Uh, you note that the uh, clock has already started, which is not a great sign. Anyway, um, well, we don't really need to set the moon as a target. What we really want is our previous mission as the target. But uh, there it is. Okay, let's call that a little bit. If anything, we want to launch into a higher orbit than that, a slower orbit, and we can do that with this because uh, this is a lighter payload and all. SASOM, throttle is up. Okay, Kazuo Nera. Let's get everything ready. And ignition. launch. Okay, heading over to Smart ASS. Well, 
Well, they uh, they don't look uh, too comfortable right now. They've been sitting in there for 17 hours. We are past the speed of sound. Ten more seconds in the first stage. All engines are nominal. First stage set. Second stage ignition. Okay, second stage is okay. We continue. We'll keep the launch escape tower for the time being. Okay, Kazu and Lara seem to be a little more comfortable now as we got through the first stage. First stage. First stage recovery failed. Uh. No, that's not the first stage. It was definitely not traveling at 3,180. Okay, wait, that's a different stage. First stage, recovery, successful. Okay, good. 16,000, as per usual. So the functional cost of this mission is like 33,000, as long as we recover that bit. I mean, each part of the mission, so 66,000 including both launches. Okay, let's get rid of the launch escape tower. Off it goes. And that frees up our docking. Well, we still got the Gemini nose fairing on there, apparently. Uh, oh, I, I think it... Uh, I think it just didn't pull away from us. I think it's not. It's just debris. Uh, NK-15Vs were fine. And set. Ignition. Alright. For NK-19s. Continuing our mission. You know we have plenty of Delta V. Unfortunately we don't have any more ignitions here. And that's again because it's only 36 tons up there rather than 40, let's say 46 tons is the capacity of this launcher. Alright, so far we are pretty much spot on as far as relative inclination, but we're way ahead of our target. More than 3,000 kilometers of increasing because, of course, we're mar mat basically matching speeds with the target right now. So we're going faster and faster, which makes it harder and harder for the target to catch up. I don't suppose this version of this engine actually throttles, does it? Oh yes it does. Throttling would be a good idea at this point. Okay, we'll shut off there. 339 by 216. And it looks like that means that we get closer by 500 kilometers every orbit is what I'm looking at like that so unfortunately this is going to remain in orbit a uh, bit of fuel there about 600 Delta V actually but we can't relight the engines so we'll just let go of it and the spacecraft is in orbit let's get the solar panels all out Now this has just storable fuels, thankfully. Okay, but this is the go-around stage, which is the only bit that we really want to have active right now. So, if uh, Smart ASS will let go, we will orient so our solar panels face the sun. So, straight up. RCS on, please. Straight up. While I took into account electric charge for all the actual modules, I didn't think about how much TAC light support actually takes. It does take some. It looks like... well, let's see what happens in time warp. But it looks like it's taking more than I'd like. So right now we're facing the sun. 
And then time warp. Yeah, n nine charge. For every ten seconds, I suppose. Or five seconds. Uh, well, we can't go to the moon like this, I think. Unless there's additional... Even if there's additional solar panels on the other side. Yeah. We're gonna lose power. How long... As, how long do we have on our charge right now? Let's get the calculator out. We're talking about 6.4 hours. That's not... That's not much. Yep, I think... Uh, I think we're gonna have to do something a little bit more restrained. Let me quickly check on the S4 and see how that bit is working out. Now we did unlock improved electrics, so maybe we should update the mission with that. And we could just do a re-entry test with this portion or something. It said no connection for a little bit, but now it's connection. It's recharging. All I have to feed is the Thor Avionics unit. But yeah, I don't know how to judge ahead of time how much TAC life support is going to take. And I think it's taking quite a lot there with the actual mission. We need an extra kilowatt to make it work out. At least. At least an extra kilowatt, which is a chunk. Okay, but we should test out the whole docking procedure at least. Though we might have to lift that... Uh, portions orbit a little bit more in order to make the docking happen quicker because we don't have uh, 6.4 out I, I don't want that we only have 6.4 hours and I think it's gonna take longer than that bit of an orbit boost okay I think that'll be enough to make it happen in three orbits But let's reorient to make sure our solar panels get a bunch of sunlight. So again, this stage is supposed to get us into orbit around the moon and then also return the capsule back. Orbit would take 800 and then at least 600 bits, it won't be carrying this portion or most of the fuel from that portion by that time. If it had any fuel from the upper stage there, the ascent stage, it, could, it will be able to use that, so that's fine. Okay, it looks like we have a separation of 15.1 kilometers there. If we do this maneuver here, and that's just an 18.2 meter per second adjustment, we'll have to do more uh, to get closer than 15 kilometers, but we'll do that first. We're through half of our power though. This is not making me feel particularly good about life. Trouble is we're not recharging on the nighttime side, obviously. Okay, well that's not oriented properly. Okay, correction. Now it looks like 20 kilometers is all we're gonna get. Well, here we'll have to deal with boil off, but since we're evidently not going to the moon this time, that's not a problem. But we really need to dock this thing now. We've got less than an hour's worth of electric charge. We could get electric charge from the other side. That has 9,000 stored up. Obviously, with the real, if we were going to the moon, we would not be doing such harsh maneuvers, which would require such hefty burns, because we would be cutting into our margins for the rest of the mission. But here, we are just in a hurry. Okay, getting within 200 meters. Everything's looking good. The question is really whether the docking ports do what I would like them to do, which is, you know, work. At this point, I think once we get as close as 75 meters, we can just zero everything out and then turn towards it and it can do the docking. 
It could also partly repay us for using so much fuel to rendezvous with it. It's still got some Arizona N204 to hand over. It's going to have to do the docking because its RCS ports are balanced. Here, uh, really only these are firing because this is the only tank that's open. We're a little bit underfueled this time, so once we dock, it better have enough Delta V to, more than enough Delta V to get us to the moon. Otherwise, we know that that's not enough. No, this has some balance issues. Well, that's gonna make things difficult. Assuming that the we're facing normal realism overall docking ports, which don't have magnetism. Okay, we are under 30 meters in closing. Okay, I, I think I'll trust SAS to keep at least semi-balanced. Uh, I don't know if we're really parallel to the port right now. Does not seem like it. Um, Okay, time to slow down, slow down, and try and control the drift. Not good, not good. Electric charge running out, huh? No kidding. Uh, we bumped into it, but not in a good way. Well, this was a great idea. Oh boy. Uh, okay. I believe I am not doing this right. What do you think? This thing is rotated all over the place. Okay, folks. I think I need to take a break from this and reapproach this when I'm not going to mess it up. We're probably going to have to deorbit anyway. But yeah. I'll need to reset and it's been a great disappointment frankly that we didn't have enough power and everything so let me pause it here and we'll try this docking again next time we will have to bring the capsule down either way and then we will regroup and see where we can go from there right now the date is August 18th 1968 so we still have time we've got a almost a year and that is what I'll have to consider. But for now, we will leave our missions in orbit and see what happens then. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.